Hey everybody, it's Jeff Ellenwood here with the South Carolina Canine Academy where we're dedicated to transforming your dog into a calm, controlled companion that listens to you. And what I want to talk to you guys today about is the 4th of July. It's coming up here very quickly, so I wanted to offer some tips and advice about how to help your dog get through the 4th of July. Because I know a lot of us out there have dogs that don't do well with fireworks. Um, and I wanted to give you some suggestions to help alleviate some of the anxiety and fear in your dog and make it a much easier evening for them to get through. So, for the first thing we want to deal with is number one, which is next year. Next year, this means if you have a dog who maybe is already a generally an anxious, fearful dog, as they, such as they doesn't take much to set them off, uh, you know, the broom falls over, they disappear for a half hour underneath the bed, um, any kind of noise freaks the dog out, or they bark at it for a long time, it takes them a long time to get over it, what I would suggest is don't wait, get help with your dog so we can help them learn how to deal with these environmental and personal stressors and how to resolve from them. They'll still react a little bit, but we can get them to resolve where they won't be stuck in that uh, fearful state of mind for very long and they can make good associations with these things. That will definitely help them be a less fearful, anxious dog, make them happier and healthier. Uh, so if you have that type of dog, Please feel free to contact me or any other behaviorist for, for help so we can uh, make your dog's next 4th of July even easier. I know that's kind of a mm, answer, but it's true, and some people wait too long, and I want to kind of put that out there, even if it just one person stands up and goes, you know what, I think I need help. Number two, burnout. This is my next suggestion is burnout. What do I mean by that? Physically and mentally burn out your dog. So that day, earlier in that afternoon, before all the festivities begin, Run your dog, take them somewhere different, burn them out. More exercise than what you normally do. I know some of you out there laughing, but you don't know my dog. You can't burn them out. I understand. But do the best you can. Definitely give them some kind of exercise. Get some physical in them. Number two is add that mental exercise in there. That's a big thing. That will definitely help burn out your dog. Some dogs burn out better from that than actually running. So what are some things you can do to work your dog mentally? If you got a dog with a high ball drive, you can build their hunt drive by taking a ball, hold your dog by the collar, there's the ball, throw it, wait for it to land and stop moving, then release your dog. Your dog's going to go around hunting and sniffing for it. Very good mental exercise. Don't throw the ball very far if the dog's never done it before because they're, you know, they might give up. But set them up for success every time. That's one thing you do. But if your dog doesn't have a high ball drive, okay, what can you do instead? You can use food, make almost the same kind of game. Use high value stuff, don't cheap out and use like the kibble. You know, get some good treats. And you can take, you know, some solo cups that you're gonna be using for the festivities, festivities, festivities later. Place it underneath there, let the dog go search and find it, knock over the cup. You can hide food in different places or even hold your dog, toss the treat, let it land, and then send your dog to go find it. They're going to use their nose just like they did with the ball. It'll help burn them out mentally, too. That's going to be a big thing. If we can get them physically and mentally tired, it will reduce the anxiety they're going to have right off the bat. Number three, contain your dog. So hopefully your dog is crate trained, that they have a positive association with it. You can send them in there. They go to sleep. They lay down. It's their, it's their safe spot. It's their security. They enjoy it. If not, again, I would say work on that for next year. Uh, but we containing the dogs is going to help them with their anxiety because dogs are den animals. They kind of want to be in that confined space when they feel anxious or fearful. That's why some dogs will go hide underneath a bed or a couch or wherever they can squeeze into when something bad's going down. That's the way they're wired, so just provide it for them. Also, we can't control the way a dog deals with an environment if we can't control it. So, I, again, I say contain because some dogs will get very, very anxious and take it out on your couch or some other expensive piece of furniture or your walls or whatever to reduce the anxiety. It's almost like the human equivalent of chewing on your fingernails when something's not going your way. So contain your dog. Number four, occupy them. So once you get them in the crate and you've worked them and all that stuff, give them something to do while they're in there. A good one, if you've got a Kong toy and the ones that look like the beehive, you can take some peanut butter and some treats, shove them in there, throw it in the crate with them. Some dogs get it faster than others, but it gives them something to do while this is all going on. Number five, ambient noise. This is going to be good to kind of cut, put up a wall of noise between your dog and those fireworks. This will make a big difference. 
Two ways you can do that. Obviously a radio. You can have a radio playing, but here's something else I do. I get a box fan and I put it in front of the crates because that sound puts up a wall of noise, of white noise that cuts out a lot of what's going on outside. Also, if your dog's in a room with windows, just shut the curtain so they're not seeing all the flashing going on. That can help as well. Um, <clears throat> so we got the ambient noise and then number six, the most important one, and this is the hardest one, not for the dog, but for the dog owner. Do not add to the dog's anxiety or fear. Now, what do I mean by that? Your dog is going to look pitiful. You're going to get this face. Okay? And you go, oh, come here. It's okay, buddy. That feels right to us because we're humans. When you console another person, it works to calm them down. With dogs, you're actually adding to the anxiety. Instead of them hearing, it's okay, it's all right, they're thinking... You're petting them and you're reinforcing that state of mind as if to say, oh, the boogeyman is just about to bust in the door and get you, buddy. And the dog's like, oh my God, really? Yes, that's what your dog thinks. I know it sounds off, but look at it like this. If you have other dogs in your house, notice that they don't give that anxious, fearful dog any attention. They just are very aloof and just don't pay it any attention. It's, like I said, it's going to be harder for you than the dog. But we don't want to tell the dog that things are going to get worse, so don't reinforce that anxiety. What I would suggest... Um, is wait for the dog to finally fall asleep. Now that might be hours away, but wait for that because that's something we definitely know he has finally kind of calmed down from it and he's fallen asleep and we can reinforce and pet him then and let him know, hey, I love you, that sort of thing. And that's good. Um, so those are six things you can do right there to help reduce your dog's anxiety a lot. Now it's not going to be an easy night for your dog, but this is going to drop down how much they're dealing with considerably. Um, now somebody's going to ask, what if I don't crate my dog because I don't believe in it? Um, they were created a long time ago. I never trained them. Whatever it is, okay? That's a good, good, very good question. What can you do instead? What I would suggest is if you're going to be home, okay, with your dog, I would not let them loose, especially if you're worried about them tearing up stuff or freaking out. Um, I would just put a leash on the dog and sit down, watch TV, and have the dog right there. They're going to freak out. They're going to be really worried. They're going to shake. They're going to pant. They're going to salivate. They're going to quiver. They're going to do that. Let it happen, just be sure to not reinforce it again. So just you're keeping them there so they can't get into things, they can't tear stuff up, they're right there to be monitored, but at the same time you're not reinforcing that state of mind. And again, wait for them to fall asleep. So those are just some things you can do. Wait Next year make sure you have a plan, have work the dog, burn them out, contain them, occupy them, get that ambient noise, and most importantly of all, don't add to the anxiety and fear by consoling your dog. So I hope that helps. I hope everybody has a great 4th of July. And I'm Jeff with the South Carolina Canine Academy. And again, we are dedicated to transforming your dog into a calm, controlled companion that listens to you. Take care and have a great 4th. Bye.